Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod video. Today we're going to be doing things a little bit different, as this video is going to primarily be a discussion about my attachment pack mod that has been in the works for a very long time. Talk about what's going on with it, where it's at. This is just more of an update video to let you guys know what's going on, because a lot of you have been asking about it lately, and I definitely do have a bit of explaining to do. Now, before we begin really quick, I do just want to mention... A big thank you to all of the people over on Patreon. You guys are super excellent. Every little bit of support from you guys makes videos like this possible, as well as extra projects like mods. So, thank you guys so much. If for whatever reason you want to consider joining up with the Patreon, you will get access to exclusive things like special Discord roles, early access to my mods for beta testing, as well as getting featured in every single video like right now. That being said, Let's go ahead and move on with the video. By the way, if you stay tuned to the very end, there will be another sneak peek for the upcoming shoulder mounted machine gun mod. So if you want to get a look at that, go ahead and stay for the very end. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the attachment pack. It's been a long time since I've even mentioned or shown anything about the attachment pack on the channel, and that's because I haven't been working on it. Uh, I've mentioned it in the comments a lot when people ask, I always try to make sure to give a response, but I'm going to go ahead and make an entire video that way I can direct people this way whenever they have a question. The attachment pack was actually the first mod that got me into modding, and it's had a lot of changes since then, and I've done a lot of modding since then. When I first started, like I said, it was on the attachment pack. That was when I was doing a lot of my learning, figuring out how to actually do things with mods. And by no means am I an expert yet, I am still learning every single day. But where I am now is very far from when I started the attachment pack. And since then, the attachment pack has gone under three different revisions, and I'm still not happy with it. At the very beginning, the attachment pack was actually going to be a pack of modern tactical attachments for the vanilla weapons to sort of bring them up to speed with a lot of the modern weapon mods that we were getting. And then a combination of community, not necessarily backlash, but people who wanted more lore-friendly attachments and my own tastes in Fallout modding changing, I revised the project to go for a little bit more of a lore-friendly feel, with a couple of modern attachments here and there, combined with a lot more of expansions to the vanilla options, including some junk items, as well as... Things that just should have been there in the first place, like color swaps, stuff like that. As time went on, the mod underwent yet another revision where I wanted to open up the vanilla possibilities. And, for example, all of the different guns in the vanilla game have different reflex sights. And I was like, that's stupid. Everything should be available. So I wanted to make every reflex sight available for every weapon, along with every scope for every weapon, and every stock, grip, etc., which kind of removed some of the uniqueness of some of these weapons, to be fair, but it was something that I thought would be fun, and then realized immediately that that was way too huge of a project, and since then, I really haven't worked on it. Now, that doesn't seem like the biggest deal. It sounds like, well, Dak, just pick it up again with whatever you're wanting to do now. Well, here's the issue. All of those three revisions to this mod over the course of about three months were all on the same ESP, <laughs> and if you know a thing or two about modding, that's not a good thing. So, the truth is, I do want to pick up the attachment pack again. I've noticed you guys asking for it, and it's something that I really want to do. It's something I promised a long time ago, and it's something I want to deliver on. But, I have to start over. That old ESP is a mess. There are so many dirty edits, and broken code, and just a bunch of nonsense. And at this point, I don't even remember where I was with any of that stuff. So... Luckily, I still have a lot of the assets that I want to use, but I want to take the mod in a little bit of a different direction. So for the next portion of the video, I want to talk about what the attachment pack is actually going to look like, the final version, where I want to go for the final release. Now then, my intention for the upcoming attachment pack is as follows. I want to add in a plethora of new attachments. This includes standardized attachments that will be the same across all weapons, as well as some unique attachments for specific weapons. For example, I want to create a new selection of sights to choose from, a new reflex sight, a new hollow sight, and maybe some sort of a combat optic, all of which are going to be the same model 
added to every weapon in the game, just to give the player a bit more variety. Now this was something in the original draft of the attachment pack. I had actually had a couple of reflex sights and a hollow sight, but they were all very modern and tactical, and that's not what I'm going for. Instead, now that I've got a little bit more experience under my belt, I want to attempt creating my own style of sights that fit more alongside the vanilla Fallout experience. I'm going to be taking a look at a lot of different sources, including other mods, Fallout 76, and just getting a feel for what Fallout sights could look like, and then go ahead and take my own spin on it. On top of that, I do want to open up all of the vanilla reflex sight options as I think they're really cool and there's just no reason that the 44 reflex sight couldn't be on the combat rifle, so I'm going to do that as well. But additionally, like I said, I want unique attachments specific to other weapons. If you've seen some of the stuff that I've done for the combat rifle already, you'll have an idea of what I'm going for. The combat rifle in my attachment pack will have unique parts from the combat shotgun, as they are supposed to be two different weapons and they don't need to share every single attachment. Now these attachments are going to vary from different levels, for example some of them will be made out of junk and scrappy parts, some of them will be pretty common and standard, and the other ones are going to be some high-end military gear. Not necessarily modern or tactical, but just better quality stuff. Hopefully the inclusion of some of these attachments will make some of the early game weapons more viable later in the game with really high perk requirements to get them up to that level. Stuff where you can literally level cap it, for example, Gun Nut Rank 4 needs a certain level to be able to unlock that, and thus that weapon will have a respective stat change to make it a little bit more viable at that level. Now, another thing about the old iterations of the attachment pack is I made a lot of changes to the vanilla attachments. Something I realize now, when my whole goal is compatibility, that's not something that's very compatible. I would like this mod to work with as many mods as possible, including other things that change vanilla assets like my combat rifle overhaul. So, most of these attachments are going to be purely additive. There are some small things that will have to be changed in order to make some of the attachments work. For example, I want to add all of the reflex sights to all of the weapons, but all of those sights are named reflex sight. So I'm going to have to make some name changes for consistency's sake between all of the weapons. For example, grab the reflex sight, name it reflex sight, grab the 10 millimeter reflex sight and call it a closed reflex sight because it is closed all the way around or something along those lines. I'll figure out naming later just to get you an idea of what things will look like. However, for maximum compatibility, there will be two versions of the mod, one of which is going to include all of the new attachments as well as changes that were required for vanilla attachments. And then there will also be a separate version of the mod that only includes the new attachments. That way, none of the vanilla stuff is changed in case you don't want that stuff changed for whatever compatibility reasons you have. My goal is to make this mod as user friendly as possible. And on top of all of that, and on top of all of that, as a little bit of a thank you to the community and you guys for putting up with this for so long, I do want to make all of these assets publicly available for any modders to use in their own mod. So when this attachment pack comes out, it will be available. You can take any sites, attachments, anything for your own weapon mods or your own weapon tweaks, whatever you want. I don't care. It's up for you to use, period. And I'm going to make that the same for all of my mods. This thanks to you guys that I even get the opportunity to do stuff like this. And so I want to be able to give back in any way that I can. Now, like I said, as soon as this mod comes out, you can feel free to take the assets and do with them what you will. But additionally, after that, I will release a file of just all of the blank assets that aren't tied to anything that you, I will upload as a modder's resource as well. Again, it's a huge thank you to you guys that I even get to be doing this stuff in the first place. It's been a lot of fun communicating and interacting with you and seeing what you like from my mods. And I'm really excited to be working on projects like the shoulder mounted machine gun as well as projects like the attachment pack and all of the little side stuff I'm working on too. And I really hope to have some more updates for you guys very soon. But in the meantime, I do have an update for that shoulder mounted machine gun. We can actually take a look at it in game as I do have a little bit of stuff to show. So the last time you guys got a look at the shoulder mounted machine gun, all I had was a render from Blender and it was just an image on the screen. But now we get to look at this thing in game. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. I had many doubts going into this that this wasn't at all going to look how I wanted. And honestly, I'm very, very pleased. Much like the skewer, this thing came out exactly as I had hoped and I'm really, really happy with the result. The entire profile of this thing is just aesthetically pleasing to me, and I know it's a big purple blob right now, but soon when I get some textures on this, I think it's going to look pretty nice. Now, I'm sure that all you guys just want to see this thing in action, so here it is in first person, and I'm sure 
that right off the bat you're going to have a lot of questions. And by all means, I'm going to go into detail on all of those in the full review, but at the very least, I can give you some information now. You'll notice this thing does have two sets of iron sights. The one that's actually used by the player, which is going to be this nice little ring sight here, and then also the original M2 iron sights. I just wanted to leave the original M2 iron sights on there because, honestly, I think they look cool. That's all there is to it. There's no function. If you tried to use those iron sights, you'd have to lean over the entire counterweight in the back and it would just be a big old issue. Uh, another thing, I know there's a couple of little seams that are visible. Those will be fixed in final release, so ignore those for now. And the other thing is going to be the magazine, which I know people are going to have some problems with right off the bat. First, I'll go ahead and talk about the actual functionality. Obviously, the M2 doesn't take magazines. I know that. But to be able to fit vanilla animations, it kind of has to. So in my opinion, enough time with a welding torch and enough chems, I think a raider could make this thing function with a magazine. It honestly couldn't be that difficult. I'm sure if they were persistent enough, they could make it work. And honestly, we live in a world with giant reptilians, so I think that we can suspend a little bit of disbelief. Now, the other thing is a big elephant in the room, and that's how janky the animation is. So I'm just going to let that play and let you make your own opinions about that. So let's talk positives and negatives. Positive, I really like how this thing looks with the recoil and how it fires on iron sights. Negatives, the animation's a bit janky with the magazine. I know, it is, but I'm not an animator and I'm dealing with vanilla animations, so it just kind of is what it is at the moment. I know it looks a little funky. This animation is intended for a much larger magazine, but it's what I've got access to. So until a much more talented author than me comes along and decides to reanimate it, this is what we've got but I think it works as intended. Altogether, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here, so I really can't wait to have this thing textured up and get some modifications on it so you guys can really see it. I'm really hoping to have this thing ready by April 1st, along with some other cool features I haven't quite talked about yet, so I'm really hoping I can get all of that done in time so I can move on to other projects like the attachment pack. With that though, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating, subscribe if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Thanks again to all of my wonderful patrons, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace!